Welcome to this new life. We're so glad you are watching. And I believe today that God has something amazing for you to discover. I'm going to start a series of four episodes where we are going to um, share about uh, great promises that God has given to us. So um, welcome to uh, an exciting four part series of this new life. The scripture we are going to share from is from Psalm 103, verse 2, 3, and 4. So let's read this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Forget not all his benefits. Do you know that living a life believing in God, living a life having Jesus um, as your Lord and Master, is a life with a lot of blessings and benefits added to it. And here we read um, four benefits that I would like over the next four parts of this new life to share with you. The first thing is that we need to be aware that God is a good God and that he has an amazing plan for us. We're going to read another wonderful scripture from the prophet of Jeremiah chapter 29, where God is revealing his thoughts that is for you and for me. No matter who you are, no matter of your present belief, these thought is for every person of those eight billion people living on this earth. This is a scripture for you. From Jeremiah chapter 29, we're going to read verse 11 and verse 12. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, and to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. God has a plan for you, a plan and a purpose. There's a reason you're living. There's a God in heaven who has uniquely created you. You're not just a simple person that is um, a result of a man and a woman that have had love. No, the Bible says that you are in the thought and heart of God. And God is a good God. He has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for you to live in. And um, it's, a, it's a plan full of future and hope. I think this is a wonderful scripture to hang on to in uh, uh, these years as we're living in that is so full of many different things that can make fear. There's pandemics, there's wars, there's rumors of war, there's financial struggles and things like that. That there is a God in heaven that cares for us. He has a plan for us. But maybe you think, oh, but that's all fine. But God is so far away. Does he really care for us? Is he really a God that knows me? And, and uh, he's up there in heaven and I'm here on earth. And so what? And can we trust the promises God has given to us? Well, there's a wonderful scripture in, in the Bible. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. That is a key scripture. And this scripture sounds like this. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him amen to the glory of God through us. Who is the him that the Bible is speaking about here? That person is Jesus Christ. This scripture is saying that all the promise God has given all through the Bible has been fulfilled and have had their yes. This means that they have come into reality in Christ Jesus. Now imagine this. God is sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to this earth 2,000 years ago. He's not just coming to make a new religion or doing good to poor and sick and needy people in his time. No, he's coming for a greater and a deeper purpose. 
He's coming to fulfill all the promises that God has given to mankind. Mankind that He loves. No matter of your skin color, no matter of your background, no matter of your social status, no matter if you're a man or woman, young, old, no matter where you are at at the point in life, God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, that in Him all the promises that Jesus, that God has made, has Jesus come to fulfill. They were all included in Jesus. That's why when we read about the life of Jesus as He was walking here on earth, He was doing good to the poor and needy. He was healing the sick. He was, he was forgiving people their, their um, uh, sins. He was recovering them. He was giving them brand new chances and new start. That's why Jesus, He came. That's truly what God wants for us to happen. That's why He sent His Son, Jesus. And that's why Jesus was crucified on the cross. The Bible says that it was on the cross that Jesus paid for all the mistakes and sins that has disqualified us from the promises and from the eternal life that God has waiting for us. All the promises that God has ever made were all included for Jesus to come and fulfill. And over the next four episodes of this new life, we are going to look closer to those four promises that we read that God gave here in Psalm 103, as we read in the beginning. The four promises is this. He wants to forgive our sins. He wants to heal our sicknesses. He wants to crown us with loving kindness and tender mercies. And He wants to redeem us from destruction. Now, before we go to the first point, watch this video. Now we are going to look into the third promise God gave. We read how He wants to redeem your life from destruction. We live in a world, the Bible says, is the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. Who is the wicked one? The Bible says how the devil is the wicked one. You can call him the devil, or you can call him Satan or Lucifer, but it's all one and same, the devil. He's the wicked one. Actually, the Bible makes it very clear that he's like a thief that just wants to come and steal from your life, from your family, from your joy and for whatever you have and anything you love, the devil would be happy to come and steal it. In John chapter 10, Verse 10, Jesus says this, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus made it very clear, the thief, the devil, has only one agenda in your life, to steal, to kill and destroy. I don't think any of us really want that to happen in our life, to steal from your joy or steal from your family life, to kill, do evil to you, make things stop, take away life, take away joy and peace. He wants to kill it and to destroy. There's so many destructive forces on this world today. 
Number one is that we, as human beings, we destroy and destruct one another by evil words or bad things or horrible acts that people is doing to one another. That can cause a person to be totally broken down. Just this morning, I was reading an article about a woman who has been sold as a slave, now forced into prostitution that somebody else was going to take advantage of her and for the prosperity of a pimp. Her life was being destroyed. There's so many destructive things. All of that is not from God. I want you to make really clear of that. God is love. He would never destroy or come with any destructive into your life. The bad things is coming from the devil. And if it's not coming directly from the devil or one of his demons, then it's coming from us fallen mankind in what we're doing to one and another. He's a thief that just wants to come and steal, kill and destroy. There's so many things that wants to destroy our lives. There's fear. People is living, too many is living in, a, in an atmosphere or a life full of fear being afraid and worried and concerned about what will tomorrow bring. Is there any hope? Lots of young people nowadays is going with thoughts that life is bad and even though there's plenty of opportunities, still there's these thoughts of what will happen? Is there any future, any hope for me? It's like a prison, a jail to be in to fear. Fear wants to control you, what you can do and what you cannot do. I know of people who's living behind locked doors, being afraid of what's out there. Other people who can't go certain places because they're afraid that things will happen to them. Or living in fear of becoming sick one day because your mom died of cancer and her mom died of cancer. And now that fear is taking hold of you. Others is really struggling with depression. Being depressed and low of heart of what will the future bring? Or maybe you're living in a situation, kind of a slavery or living in a situation that is just so dull. It's like darkness is all around. You cannot see there's any hope or where is there any light at all. Like this woman I met in a certain nation I went to in Europe. I was having a festival there. We were preaching in a big auditorium that could hold six, seven hundred people in a remote city in Europe. And I was preaching as always the good news, the gospel, which means the good news, that there's hope in Jesus Christ, there's hope that Jesus Christ was sent to this earth from God, being God coming to us to bring light and hope future. And I was preaching this. Little did I know that there was sitting this woman, a woman who was in her 30s, in that crowd. Actually, she told me afterwards, she should actually not have been in that meeting. That was not her plan. She told about her life, how that she had been living with many different men, taken advantage of. And in the beginning, it was a lot of love, as she said. But then it always, after weeks or months, started to be a fight, being beaten up by the husband, the man she was living with, and fighting, lots of alcohol, lots of drugs, just to try to make it through day and forget what she was going through. Then they'd always ended up after some weeks, some months, that they broke up. She went away or he moved out. And then after some weeks, some months, she felt so lonely. She went out and found another guy that was willing to move in, live with her, 
and then the story was repeated. And it has, this has been going on, repeating itself year after year. And now she was in her mid-30s. She had a little daughter five years old. Let's call the woman Mariam. And Mariam was so depressed. She felt that there was no hope for her, that life was not worth living. All was darkness. She had tried to find love. She had been seeking everywhere, inviting people into her life, hoping that in that way she would find love. But it just turned worse and worse, year after year. And now she was at a point that she felt life was not worth living. She planned committing suicide. And she felt actually the world was so bad a place that she did not want her daughter to live and grow up in this world. So Mariam, she planned everything in detail. How she first would take the life of her daughter and then she would take her own life afterwards. To end all this depression, all this miserable life she was living in. She said how she went to this town to buy all she needed to do these bad decisions. This was not because Mariam was an evil person. This was because Mariam was a living a life full of destruction. The thief has really had a chance in her life, hadn't he? When she passed that, that sports arena where we had the, the festival, Marianne looked at that poster that invited everybody to come and hear the gospel and how there would be prayer afterwards. And Marianne, she decided maybe she could wait until tomorrow before she would end the life of her daughter and commit suicide herself. She came into that meeting, was sitting in the very back row. I didn't know her story. I didn't know her situation. I was just preaching what the Bible says, how Jesus came to save us. That word, save us, is the Greek word, so-so. It really means more than just to save us and we will have eternal life. It also means to make whole what is broken, to restore our lives, to heal us, to persevere us, to protect us. It all is included in Jesus. When I gave the invitation at the end, many people came for prayers and one of them was Mariam. Somebody prayed with her. And she told me how things lifted off her life. All the darkness, all the heavy burdens, all the hopelessness. When we were praying to Jesus to come and touch her life, all this started to vapor away, started to go away from her life. She felt something new started to come. A little spark of light some hope, some lightness. She said, I felt I was being redeemed. In that moment, she was calling on Jesus to come and help her. We have met Mariam afterwards. She's alive. Her daughter is growing, living. They have a good life. They're excited. They have had now Jesus come into their life. He has redeemed her. This was one of the promises, wasn't it? That Jesus gave, that he would come and he would redeem us. Many people nowadays is living with shackles. They call them bad habits, but it's actually shackles they feel inside. Some is bound in alcohol abuse. You're trying to drown maybe bad decisions you have made or things that was done to you. Maybe you have been abused. Maybe you have been held down or maybe people has broken you. 
And now you try to get just a little break by drinking or taking drugs, narcotics, just to dull those emotions, those feelings, that sense of to being totally destroyed or destructive. And as long as that alcohol and that are narcotics is working, oh, you're living like in a world that is colorful and free. But then the effects of the alcohol and drugs is lifting off again. And then you're back to point zero again. Still under all these destructive forces and habits, full of condemnation and guilt. I don't know your situation. I don't know your story. I don't know what kind of change you feel you are shackled in, in your life. But I know that Jesus Christ can help you and set you free. He loves you very much. A few years back, we had a festival in an African nation. And I noticed at the very front, there was standing a tall, tall man. And he was having a chain in his hand. And that chain was chaining another man standing next to him. The man next to him had this chain with three locks on around his neck. And it was obviously for everyone that that man, he was completely insane. It turned out that these were brothers. The older brother was the man standing holding the chain and the younger brother was the man chained. He, the man changed, he was all the time, you know, talking to people that was not there, aggressive in his behavior, yelling, screaming. He told how he was hearing voices and how he was very aggressive. They were standing there. This was a four night festival. In the first three nights, they were standing there. And the man in chain was very noisy. And to be honest, he was disturbing the, the festival meeting quite a bit. The fourth night when I came and shared the gospel, he was not there. That's what I thought at least. I was preaching. To be honest, it was a little bit nice not to be so disturbed by this man always standing there yelling and screaming. And then we gave the altar call. It was possible for people to come and have prayers. And as we stood there, to our surprise, all of a sudden we saw these two men, these two brothers standing right there at the altar. But now the chain was unlocked and off the man's neck. I looked at them. We got eye contact. I said, something has happened here. So we invited them to come to the platform and share what happened. The man in chain, he came up. He fell to his knee. He lifted his hands and started to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And his older brother started to tell the story of the younger brother. How a few years ago, this brother, for some unknown reason, started to become very depressed. And the depression just became darker and heavier and deeper. Now his younger brother started to hear voices start to be out of his mind, not being able to control himself anymore, running around in time in the town and never really knowing where he was at. That's why the brother had to put a chain on him, that he should not hurt others or himself as he was running away and running around in town. The older brother said, when we heard about this festival, we decided to come. And I was standing, the brother said. He was standing, believing that Jesus would help his younger brother to become free, that Jesus would redeem him. And on the fourth day, all of a sudden, Jesus came and touched this man's life. It all happened out of the blue as they were waiting for the service to, to start. 
says we don't know what happened. We just knew and realized that Jesus came and set my brother free. Now I could see with my own eyes this man was truly free. He gave me a big hug, even though it's Jesus who deserved to have that hug. You could tell on his eyes this was a man that was free. He had the most gentle, mild eyes. I can still see them for me. He is still free today. Jesus has redeemed him. What about you? Are you bound in alcohol, in abuse, fear or depression? Heavy loaded with, with, dep with depression and guilt and condemnation. Do you know God sent his son Jesus to restore your life? He wants to take that broken heart of you and restore it if you will just give him all the pieces. Come to him and give him all the pieces. It might not happen from one moment to the next. It might be a process he starts in your life and take one broken piece, repair it, and then the next, and then the next. But I can guarantee you this. He has future and hope for you. And he wants to set you free. I would like to pray a prayer for you. If you say, I need Jesus for this. Why don't you invite him into your heart first as the Savior and then as the one who wants to redeem you and restore your life. If you want to be included in this prayer, put your hand upon your heart right now then. And then we'll pray and pray this prayer together with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, as my Redeemer. Set me free. Give me liberty. Restore my life. I invite you to come. Be my Savior. Be my Lord Jesus. Amen. I believe that the Lord Jesus has now started a new thing in your life that's going to be full of peace, full of hope, full of future. And he wants to redeem you. Little by little, until your life is restored. Don't give up hope. He's with you. Thank you for watching this new life. Next week, we are going to share the fourth and last part. And it's the one that is about that God wants to crown you with loving kindness and tender mercies. If you know of people that has these problems and need to experience the love of God, why don't you invite them to come and watch this new life next week? May God bless you. May he be with you and may he redeem your life in the name of Jesus.